everybody. This is the night of a very, very serious topic. And I'm hoping those that have fun with it are those that have gotten out of abusive situations. First, I'd like to say thank you for joining in tonight. And I want to say hello, hello, hello. We're still a rose in spite of it all. Understand how much we are a beautiful flower in spite of all that we go through. We are survivors. And this is a night. These roses are going to talk about their experiences in relations to domestic violence. And we're going to talk about not the husbands and all that. I don't want to get into that one tonight. But I want to talk about how you got out of abusive relationship with a boyfriend. And uh, if you ended up marrying someone very special who, who was nowhere near of what you had, yes, let's incorporate that into this conversation tonight. Um, I did some research. Before I come online, I always do research. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. I'm so happy to see you here. Um, please feel free to chime in. We're talking about abusive boyfriends. Signs of an abusive boyfriend. What should you do? What you need to do after you get out of an abusive situation? And how did it work out for you that you didn't repeat the cycle? Because a lot of people repeat the cycle. And there are reasons for that. I'm not, a, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. I've just been through some things. And um, through those experiences, the reason why I'm online, period, is I pray first, God, whoever I reach tonight, if they're in any of these situations that I have experienced, please help them to get the courage to not be in those situations because we're all supposed to be on this earth. Hey, sweetheart, my baby girl's online. Um, we're, we're supposed to be happy on this earth. No, we're not gonna have, everything's not gonna work out in our favor all the time, but we are supposed to be at peace. Nobody is supposed to use us as a punching bag or to belittle us, demean us, to embarrass us, to defame who we are. That's not what we're here for. And I know some things happen in our childhood to get us, to make us feel that we are not worthy of a fulfilled life. I'm here to tell you, hey, nephew, that's a lie. We are here to have a fulfilled life. No matter what you've gone through, we're here to be better. We're not here to be dead on earth. So let's get to our topics. I sometimes go on a tangent because I'm passionate about what I do. Um, I have a lot of stories about what women have gone through and they resonate with me. I may not have gone through everything, by no means have I not, um, have I? But I have friends and family members that can tell you some stories. And uh, tonight we're gonna talk about them. And I, I want you all to be honest because if you know somebody who's gone through something, are there being in an there are an abusive relationship you have a responsibility to do something about that you should not turn the other cheek turn your face as if you don't see it and and sweep it under the rug we all have a responsibility to help our fellow man whether it's a family member a co-worker or a neighbor or even somebody we don't even like we have a responsibility to look out for each other um, I ran across a lot of stuff, so I, I, I don't even know where to start. 
But one article, there were 10 telling signs that you're trapped. I want to start with that one. That one is by Emily Lockhart. Um, she wrote this article back in 2013. Um, first thing they do when you start dating these, these men, they humiliate you. They want to make you feel subservient, like they're better than you. They're not your equal. They're here and you are here. So they spend a lot of time. They start off charming you. They, people never talk about that. You just don't sign up for abusive relationship. It just doesn't happen. You don't just say, oh, I want that man because I know he's going to hurt me. They do something very good to you to get you connected with them. So you don't see it coming. You don't see it coming. So for people to say, I don't know why she was with that man. I don't know what made her go with him. I don't know why she dated him in the first place. Stop judging. You don't see it coming. And by the time you see it coming, because women are raised to be forgiven. They're raised to show their emotions. They're raised to be the Cinderella. There's a book out about the Cinderella complex. We're raised to always be accommodating to others. So you don't see an abusive man come into your life until you're abused. I'm gonna speak for the ladies out here. And if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but I know I'm not wrong. So we can just sit here and be disagreeable, be disagreeable the whole night. Um, uh, Drea says, yes, they charm you. I, I thank you, Drea. You don't, you don't just walk in. You, you're blindsided because they look good. They smell good. They're, they, they're full of intimacy. They tell you what you want to hear. They charm you. And then they go in for the kill. And they're strategic. They're strategic in even doing that. So back to my list. Not my list, Emily Lockhart's list. But you don't need to, to research this. Everybody out here has got a friend. Everybody out here can put all those friends together and you will see a commonality. The fact that they all went through the same thing. They all went through the same thing. Thank you, Judge. Um, okay, Humi humil hu humiliation. They want you to feel here because they have, in order for them to feel here, you think they want a partner? You think they want a balance? No, you think they want unity? No, 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 no. It's important for them to be here and you to be here. And you can get so connected in there. And I'm letting you know now, some strong women have been abused. So you women who think you're passive, think it only happened to you because you are you are just a subservient person you're docile you 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 don't know any better you shy you're introverted don't don't put that harm on yourself it can happen to the best of us you don't see it coming and then then we go through embarrassment but that's further down the list so let me get back up where I'm supposed to be verbal insults now I've been here if they can't attack you, they if they know they better not put their hands on you, because I wish somebody would do that to me. Um, I'm here to tell you. I, I, I'll tell you about my family upbringing later. My grandma, oh, Lord, Mama Lucille, we'll talk about that another night. Your looks, intelligence, they wear you down. Oh, you got a promotion? Oh, you still ain't nothing but a grade five. So what's that? 20 cents? Um, uh, oh, you got your hair colored? How many, what weave is that? Is that, is what, how much of that hair is yours? Or um, there you go, letting them weave your hair again. You look like a monkey. 
what what horse what horse tail you got on you now um you look terrible i know you're not going out the house with me with that on you can't be thinking you going with me looking like that oh you 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 think you going to put on that dress you look like a old hag what about that other dress i bought you Oh, you probably going to look even more stupid in that. So either way, come on, let's go. Can you imagine hearing that over and over again? Drea says they make you feel low because they are in charge. They are not in charge, baby girl. They're not in charge with anything. They have trouble on the job. They People don't like them at work. They are losers all the way around and that's why they have to pick on you because they're losers they're losers so they see you are a beautiful creature they see you are that beautiful delicate rose but their their focus their goal in life is to bring you down as far as they can take you. Just bring you down because they don't want you to think nothing about yourself. Because the more they get you down in the dumps, that's when they take control. That's when they take over your mind. They've already, they've already beat you down. Well, wait, 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 I'm, I'm skipping, I'm skipping. Okay, wait, 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 take me back up. Okay, this is, this is a tricky one. Physical violence. If y'all letting y'all boyfriend shove on you, do this to your head, do this to you, I'm here to tell you cousin but they convince you that they're in charge yes they convince you that they're in charge but i'm here to tell you never give any person in your life authority over you if you give a person authority over you yes they are in charge they you're their slave you're their slave. What do you think the pimps do with the prostitutes? These young, beautiful baby girls out here. They take control over their lives with a lot of manipulating. But wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going down further in my list. Um, rob your self-esteem. Yes. Okay. Wait, wait. We going there. That's a really good one, Vanessa. Thank you. Hey, girl. Okay, physical violence. It starts slow. The, the pokes. Facebook, the pokes. Why are you doing the pokes? It's insulting to see the word poke. It's ab abusive to me. Somebody you don't know even, and they poking you. And they're not poking you in the physical sense, but just the reality of the word poke. It's annoying. If you got a man in your life and he pokes you to get your attention, he doesn't like you. If you got a man, a uh, 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 house, uh, I don't know what the kids call it. I forgot. Anybody know what that word is when you're house wrestling or house playing? No, you're a lady. That's no way to play because I'm here to tell you that that plan is going to turn into this before you know it. You Don't let nobody touch you like that. That's a violation. Um, the physical violence starts slow. I added this, but it aims high. It aims high. They're here to start, get you ready. They get you in, you're in training to be mentally and physically destroyed. It's beyond abuse. 
destroyed. So they start off low with the pokes, with the, hey girl, you hear me talking to you? All right, move. No, don't touch me. I I I told my 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 one of my well my ex boyfriend I can't believe I'm saying that almost five years okay he did this to me once time out but he didn't say time out he was like while I'm talking no don't disrespect me I don't work too hard to be the woman that I am today you think I'm gonna let you come at me and say b shut the uh up because to me, that's what that was saying. I, we ain't playing uh, basketball. No, don't do that to me. And he apologized and he never did it again. We have to set our boundaries, ladies. Because a lot of times, a man may not mean any harm. But don't play with me. I'm, I'm, I'm 55 years old. I'm not five years old, okay? So... When they start doing this, oh, I'm just kidding, girl. I'm just, mm -mm. and then you push them. Stop, stop playing with me. Leave me alone. Don't, 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 don't even engage in playing like that because you're sending messages already of what you will accept in your life. You're, you're sending messages that this is acceptable. Stop playing with me. No, uh-uh. Maybe if you're at the restaurant and he does that to you, shove the hell out of him out of his seat and say, please don't do that to me again. And just, and just keep eating your food. I don't think he'll do that again. A lot of times men have to be taught, I'm not the one. And guess what? If we all started thinking that way and we we're on one accord, ladies, instead of fighting each other, I was walking across the street this morning and, and the lady wouldn't even let me in. She just glared at me like, B, I ain't letting you get across the street and, and gave me the look too. We got to stop that. We should always be on one accord. If I got a boyfriend, that I know he's no good. I'm not gonna sit here and 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 keep him being no good. And then we break up. He don't want me no more anyway. And he goes to somebody else. Somebody's gotta stop the train. It's a it's a negative cycle going in circles over and over again and it's vicious and it's wrong and we we have to be accountable i got a book coming out oh well the first book talks about accountability the little girl inside it talks about sometimes it's it's not anybody's fault somebody's just got to take a stand and say this is wrong this is wrong Okay, I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent there. Okay, so they start off with the the pokes and whatnot, and then it graduates. It graduates verbally. They call you every name in the book. Every name in the book. You are God's creation. How can anyone, if God's not doing it to you, how can we allow anyone to talk to us any kind of way and say anything to us and that be acceptable? Um, they start hurting you. There's, they start becoming physical. They start... They start, um, y'all, I can't see any more comments. So y'all may have to really come in and let me know what's going on. I'm sorry. Um, they start coming at you. They start hitting you. They start punching you. They have the audacity to be strategic with it and hit you in certain places so your workplace won't see it. You don't go to school, go to work with your body all out. So they punch you in places that no one can see it. 
No, we deserve so much more than that. So they beat you down. You're already mentally gone because he's worked on your brain so much. Your mental capacity is just numb. You don't know whether you coming or going. You done, you done lied to your girlfriends. You, you not even seeing your family because that's something else they do. They control you. They have mood swings. You put on the negligee for them and you, 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 you know, you, you work it for them. It's good for 10 minutes. Yeah, I said 10 minutes. Afterwards, they hate you again. They hate you. The sad thing is these men hate themselves. It's nothing you can do to fix them. Half the time, we need to be focusing on, matter, matter of fact, all the time, we need to focus on fixing us. You don't have time to fix a boyfriend. That's, that's a therapist's job. That's why they have so many of them out there. Let them do their job. They went to school for it. They get paid for it. They're trained to do that. That's not your job. And they mamas, they got mamas. You're not, you, what are you doing? You done got all your kids out of the house. Now you want to be a grown man's mama? Come on, ladies. Dre says, Drea says, oh yes, under your clothing, but it becomes more physical when people see, but he was always there coming up, how I bruised. Okay, thank you for that. They help you lie to people. After they done effed up your body, after they've destroyed your body, then they come back, oh, you should have seen how she fell down them steps. I told that girl to watch them steps, but I fixed it. I don't think it'll happen anymore. And you say, oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I don't know when it's enough. But we start helping them with the lies. No, remember this one, I fell down the steps. This, this, no, this one, I fell out the backyard. Remember down in the deck. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And then behind closed doors, he's telling you, you better have said that. And then they go, I will, I'll kill your mom and your dad. You better not tell nobody. I teach my little, I teach my babies and my grandbabies. If somebody tells you that, don't worry about them killing your parents or your, 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 your relatives. You do what you have to do in spite of what they say. That's what I taught my children when they were little kids. Because you, we all know that's a bluff. That's just another control factor. That's when they start with the manipulating game. They want to tell you that, oh, if you do this, or why you won't let me see my son, and you know he means the world to me. Why are you going to break up the family? What family, dude? Families don't treat each other like this. Families don't destroy each other. Families don't hurt one another. And if you do have that kind of family, it's okay to find another family. I'm here to tell you. We're not here on this earth to be taken through a bunch of drama. We get it on the jobs. We get it everywhere else we go. Why do we want it at home? Why will we even accept it at home? Home is where we should go in and be relaxed. And thank God that we made it home safe and sound. Okay. After they control you, they got you now. They got you. You just a slave running around. No, no, you ain't running around because you too deflated. You have no energy. You're not running. You're, you have no energy. You are dead. You are mentally, physically dead. Picking at you, 
your fault. Everything you do is just, ooh, you cook that. My mama don't cook it like that. That's nasty. I won't be eating tonight. And she been in the, on the stove all day trying to make a nice dinner for you to put you in a good mood and you don't want to eat it because it's nasty. Another way of controlling you put you down to the point where you even think ain't nobody else going to want you but him. Because he done told you that too. You got three kids. Ain't nobody going to want you with three kids with your ugly A self. Ain't nobody going to want you. You lucky I'm here in the first place. Um, Vanessa, manipulate and make you feel isolated from friends and family. Yes. They'll go far and even say, your girlfriend wanted me anyway. You better check yourself. You better act like you want me because they want me. And, and ha I hate to say, some of the times they're right. Because y'all know we're going to have some girlfriend nights because them girlfriends, oh, they, they'll, they, I, I, that's another night. We won't even go there. But half the time he might be right about that. But they do want to ostracize you from your families. They do want to ostracize you because they need complete control. They can't have complete control if you got your family around. When is he going to have time to abuse you and hit you and call you names? And sadly, if you have children witnessing this, more chance than not, your son is going to do the same thing. And your baby girl, oh my God, your precious baby girl, she's going to find herself in an abusive relationship. Not many people have a willpower to stop a cycle. That takes willpower. That takes faith in God. And that takes a whole lot of willpower to stop something in its tracks to make sure, well, my mommy went through it, my grandmommy went through it, my great-grandmommy went through it, but I'm not going to go through it. That takes a lot of willpower and a lot of faith in God and a lot of strength. And you got to work with your mind always. Oh, my mommy went through that. Oh, I can't. Mm -mm. Oh, no. You hear yourself talking to yourself all the time. Oh, oh no. Because that, that right there was a sign to me. It was somebody who could control, try to control me. And he, he may not have meant anything by it, but you don't do a lady like that. You got to treat me like a lady all times. Because I'm going to treat you like a king. But you can't, you can't come at me sideways. Come at me south, cause I can't. I can't. You, are you. We can't work it out. That's important, ladies. We have to set boundaries. Um. That's right. We already talked about that one. Thank you, Vanessa. Your friends and family and blame game. I wouldn't have hit you, and and you had to get your eye. I um uh, sold back up if you wouldn't have been so nasty to me. If you didn't give me that look, that wouldn't have happened to you. If you had this house spotless and put them towels on the rack the way I told you to, this wouldn't have ever happened to you. It's all your fault with your stupid A self. That's got chills over me just saying those words. And it should have chills over everybody on this call, whether you're an abuser, whether you've gone through this, uh, this video, whether you've gone through it, or whether you witnessed someone going through it. We all should have the same reaction. Have you noticed how we see these shootings and we see it on TV? We all go, oh, oh, wow, another one. We keep going. I don't keep going. I cry every time. I, I think I'm strange. I not only cry, I pray to God that he lets us know what's supposed to come out of all of this. 
because I can't take it. My TV's off most of the time now because I can't, I can't, I, I don't understand where the empathy for others has gone. It's just not here. People don't care about each other. Okay, that's another topic. I'm sorry. Um, manipulation to make you doubt yourself. They start playing games with your mind. They start playing games with you on a on a big scale. Them them game players, you gotta watch them. They 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 look cool. They're charming. They are exciting. They're fun to be around, but they're dangerous. They are dangerous, and you need to stay away from them. He knew I had no one. Yes, baby girl. Women, let me tell you a secret. When you dating somebody, please don't sit in there at the, at the night at the at the bar or uh, at the at the um, club or at the at the restaurant or at the park. Okay, we might go to the park or go to the coffee shop. He did this to me. He did that to me. And um and my mama did this to me. And my and my sister did this to me. Play the victim if you want. I'm here to tell you. Guess what he doing? Mm. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. That happened to you? Ooh. Ooh. You mean to tell me as beautiful as you are, you went through this? You went through that? Yeah. And then my daddy, I don't even know my daddy. My daddy been gone for all my life. Um, and I just, I just don't, I just, I, um, but anyway, um, I work here and I got three kids and I'm, um, Baba, he, see, he done, he ain't thinking about nothing else you said. He is, you have already given him his angle. You have told him that you are a victim already. That's why I preach and I preach and I preach and I ain't no preacher. Brokenness. Begots brokenness. So uh, please, if you are broken, that's why I, I tell my 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 bet my closest friends, my new baby girl, when we are broke, when our spirit is torn, when we know we are at our lowest point. Why are you on Facebook Live getting ready to meet somebody at the coffee shop? Why? You have to heal. Because that guy at the coffee shop who taught, met you through Facebook, you don't even know this man. You met him up there. You don't know that he is the abuser. Now, granted, I got some good friends that I've met through here. And I and I'm so grateful for them. One, I call my brother. His name is William. Um, you don't know when you meet people, they're they're not shrinks. They're not your therapist. You are not supposed to be in there telling him all the things that has happened to you. If you want to write a biography, write one. But it does not belong. This man is not privy. He's not worthy of your vital information. It's not for him to know. So he's used that information. As, as Drea said, he's learned already. You have told him the way to get in the front door, not the back door. You let him in the front door. You ain't even sneak him in the back. You have went wide open. You've showed him everything you have, every vulnerability that you have, he now knows. So guess who has the upper hand? That is why he thinks he's here. Because you have told him things that make him think you are here. And I've been guilty of that. That's why I'm so passionate about this story. They don't deserve that information about you. Please don't reveal 
everything about you when you meet somebody. For, 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 for starters, let them tell you who they are. You need to be sizing them up. Don't give them an opportunity to size you up. For what? Because that's when they go in for the kill. Please, I'm not talking about the good men. Please don't be emailing me, texting me on the back. You wrong. You, you, you're crazy. You, you're a male basher. I love me some men, okay? And hear that. Love me some men. Men don't hurt women. So I'm not speaking to men tonight. I'm speaking to the ladies who are with boyfriends who are abusive or they see signs and they have not walked yet. And I'm here to tell them, warn them, can't tell them anything that they need to walk quickly. There's a reason you got to walk because if you run, he may catch you. You got to ease on out the same way he eased on in. Um, my cousin, Reverend Barbie. Broken vessels can hold water. Thank you. That's a, that's a topic by itself you need to do. You need to come on with me. Um, um, demeans you privately. Okay, check this out. Y'all seen this on some movies, I know. It's incredible because it's so, it's so real. Okay, you're at a dinner party. You looking good, he looking good. Yeah, you have been knocked upside the head, but he's covered you all up. So you got nice clothes on. You at this dinner party, y'all looking great. And you go into the bathroom to, to, to make sure you look pretty for him, not for yourself, for him. And he comes behind you and he he strong arms you and say, who were you looking at just now? When I get you home, you're going to regret that. Now, you ain't seen nobody in the room because you're already too scared to even look at your friend. We don't need that, y'all. And, and the sad thing is, um, another sign never wanting to bring me to his family. Oh, yeah, because he didn't, he didn't, that, there, that's not going to happen. And that's another key. Ladies, when men don't bring you to their families and celebrate you, like you, I know, celebrate them. Hey, hey, here go my boyfriend. Uh-huh, his name Jimmy. Uh-huh, I, I know. Yeah, that's his car outside. Y'all see that Jaguar out there? I know he cute. I know, girl. I know. They When they don't do that to you, they don't like you to begin with. They don't like you to begin with. And a lot of times they ostracize you from their families because their families know what they're doing. Or worse yet, they've seen their daddy beat on their mama or vice versa. And I hate to tell you, some of them even have seen their mama ex witness or experience their mama trying to get with them. So they got all this mess in their head against women, period. And we have to arm ourselves with knowledge. And if you have the experience where you have been there, done that, you have to understand what you don't want anymore in your life. Surround yourself with reminders so that you don't repeat it. Because there are more men out here then there are women. I'm sorry. There are more women out here than men. So a lot of times women, we get caught up into desperation. I'm tired of being lonely. I don't want to go out with, by myself because everybody be just looking at me. I want a man on my shoulder so I can feel like I belong. They know that too. So they always feel they have an advantage over us and they utilize their advantages over us. So I hate to tell you, sisters, and if you're not my sisters, I hate to tell you this. We have to arm ourselves with knowledge. It ain't about our looks. 
it certainly ain't about five degrees and about your big house and your your fancy car out and your and your two or three car garage because most of my friends here in washington dc area that's that's how they come the men don't care about that they might resent you even more and we always can't wait. I can't wait till you come to my house. I'm going to make you a good dinner. And you we going to have some fun. I'm going to put some nice music on, put some candles on. And you know I got a jacuzzi, right? He like, yeah, I can't wait to get her. I'm going to break that sister down so bad. I can't wait to get to her. And he just smiling at you. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, what you want me to bring? Yeah, okay, I got you. Ladies, we got to be careful. We got to be careful. Um, welcome, my friend, Kate. Hey, Kate. I don't see you here, but I'm welcoming you because my cousin said to do so. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Drea says, he said, I could have any woman I want, but I chose. Oh, baby girl. Oh, my God. Why don't we say, I think you should do that. Why don't we ever suggest to the man that tells us, girl, I don't need you. I can get any woman I want. You ain't, you, you way down there. You ain't even got, you ain't even got no nice house. I just left a girl who, who down the street, girl, I ain't gonna tell you what she got. And she all over me. I don't even know why I'm with you in the first place. Boy, bye. You know what the average woman does when a man tell him her that? She ups her game. Oh, let me straighten up. Oh, let me see if I can buy the two, get rent a two bedroom apartment instead of that one bedroom. Oh, let me go buy me some clothes on credit. And I don't know when I'm gonna be able to pay it back, but I gotta up my game if I'm gonna be able to keep him. Up your game for who? That's just another ploy to manipulate and pretty much kill, steal, destroy. Okay? Your spirit is gone. You are emotionally drained. You can't even take your kid to an outing at school because you are so frazzled. Your hair is falling out. I don't know what it is about the middle of center of our head, but my hair is thinning in the middle. And I, and I know it's stress. But I tell you one thing, it ain't no stress over no man. It's stress because I got a lot of work. And my heart goes to you women because of everything I've gone through. I don't want one of you. I don't care if you never want to see me again. I hope and pray you take this message to anybody that's being, uh, being abused because we don't have to go down that road. I don't care and you don't, I don't have no side uh, 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 website where you gotta, uh, you have to charge where you, well, where you have to pay for my advice. No, I'm not going to do that. $25 for this. If you're on the phone with me for 20 minutes, $75. No, no sister should do that to another sister. There, there should be other ways to make your money. But I'd be doggone if I will see, be on here and no, not be here for a reason. And that's why I'm here. We don't have to go through the madness. We're not here for that. I have a, my cousin is a preacher, a pastor, mind you, and I would love for her to give us some words on why we are here on this earth. Each one of us has a purpose. It is not to have a man's fist upside your head, belittling you in front of your children calling you all kinds of names, insulting you day in, day out. You can never do anything right. And he ain't even a husband. That's why I said we ain't even got to that group yet. You're dating this man. And where? what is the dating 
what dating are you doing when you have a boyfriend that you've allowed to be there's some woman on facebook and she is mutilated this man beat her so bad i tried to reach out to her but she didn't want to but she put her face on facebook so of course i reached out to her but she was her whole eye was demolished. She had to get surgery and about 50, 100 stitches or something. And I reached out to her, hey, if there's anything I, I can do, please. A fiance? Really? You gave him the title of a fiance? See, it starts, it's, we, we, we give it titles that they don't deserve. You're supposed to be wined and dined. I don't care if you pay, he pay, but you're supposed to be taken care of. You're supposed to be loved. You're supposed to be celebrated. You're supposed to be spoken to in, in, with kindness. Support. You had a hard day at work? Oh, let me make you some tea. You want me? Let's just go out to eat tonight. I'm, I, I don't want you cooking. You do too much as it is. Oh, I'm. Oh, you got a headache? Let me go get something put on your head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had a bad day, baby. I can't wait till this is over. I, I do. We we gonna retire. We gonna. And when are we gonna set that wedding date? No. It, and if you got a fiance for twenty years. No, he ain't marrying you. He just trying to keep you shut up. Just, you, you're here to be loved, celebrated. If you're lonely, get prepared. There's a song by Jill Scott that I'm gonna learn how to sing. I think I'm gonna sing it for my book signing. She says, I'm getting prepared. I'm getting prepared. So she talks about cooking. It's an old song. I just was flipping channels on my iTunes and I was like, whoa, whoa. And then I started, you know, you know, getting into the groove. And I'm like, wow, she is getting prepared for that man that greets her at the end of the aisle with a smile. And he's genuine. And he's sincere. He's sincere. But we get so, we, we, we can't be lonely. We can't, if you are in with God, you won't be lonely. If you start celebrating yourself, learning about yourself, what you like about yourself, what you don't like about yourself, reading, spoiling yourself, reading one of my books, curling up, getting a novel, because my stuff is raw. Getting a novel that keeps you going from page to page, curling up, glass of wine or glass of water, I don't, whatever you do, be, be in it for you. And if you celebrate yourself the way that you should celebrate yourself, he made me, I'm sorry, he made me dependent on him so I could not leave. I had no money, no job, no family, and nowhere to go with my six-year-old son, and he knew that. Judge, I'm here to tell you, there is a lady, and this is what I talk about, taking the first step. There is no reason in hell to be with a man who abuses you. There was a woman who took her on Facebook, y'all. Facebook is raw, too raw sometimes. Um, this lady was tired of the abuse. Shelters told her they had no space for her. She gets out of the shelter with her baby. She lays on the grass with her baby on top of her. And the cops saw her and he made some calls. Now she's in her apartment. She's got food. All these corporations came out to help her. You know why they helped her, Judge? Because she took the first step. 
That's why it's important, ladies. We got to educate ourselves. We got to get education. We got to have jobs. We got to strive to get the best jobs. I got a sister who called me. I ain't got no money for this. I ain't got no gas. I ain't got no... Uh-uh. I don't want to hear it. You can out sing any of them singers that's on a contract. You, you find a way to sing, I guarantee you, you're going to get some money. We got to do what we got to do. I don't, I know what you're saying. I ain't have nowhere to go. I, you got to do what you have to do. You never stay in a bad situation. You leave. This woman was on the ground because the shelter kicked her out. We got to empower ourselves. We have to say no, no more madness. No more madness because they will wine and dine us in that house, buy us everything we want, the jewelry, the furs, be out with the hoes from every area code, especially the ones with the six figures or more. Been there, done that. And, and and they say, this girl ain't going nowhere. She living large. I got her in a nice home. She ain't got to work if she don't want to. She ain't making no money, no way. That's what he used to say. I said, I be damn, I'm about to be foreclosed. I'm about to get up out of here. I love this dream house. We built it from scratch. But I tell you one thing. My life was more important and seeing my baby girls grow up to see how a man is supposed to treat a woman, I had to make a stand. Dream house, shelter, no house, what? And I had an opportunity to leave my job and go all the way to the West Coast and just be pretty for him. That's what the corporation wanted me to do. But I prayed about it. Mm -mm. I stayed put. And thank God there were reasons why I stayed put. But I refused. I ended up leaving a big, beautiful plush house to a rented townhouse with my babies. And that lady, the landlord saw, we're friends today, by the way. The landlord saw me running around, uh, my, my children, baby kids running around all over the place. And she's like, I can't, her husband said, no, nah, we can't rent it to her. She got too many kids. It was only three, but to them, that was, ugh, ugh, ugh. they didn't have any children. So I flipped out pictures of our home that we came from. They rented it to me on the spot. So I'm here to tell you, you got to take the first step. You got to take the first step on faith, not on Tanya Barbie's word, on faith. God will bless you and he will help you. It might be six months. My town home was nothing like the house I left. I was distraught, but I had this sense of peace that I no longer had to deal with that. The verbal abuse, no physical. Just you ain't about nothing. You ain't going to never be about nothing. Nobody's going to want you with three kids anyway. You ain't all that. Um, you you a F stick. Never understood what that word meant. But I'm going to tell you a secret. Uh, he kept calling me a F stick. The word F. Yeah, I ain't going to tell you because I might have kids on here. He called me F stick, F stick, F stick. So I'm all frazzled. Oh, I called my uncle, my uncle Rob Tip Tipton. I love him to death. He was like, he's not even my real uncle, but he will always be my real uncle in my heart. My mom brought him to us as a, a role model, a mentor uh, when we were little kids. So I called him. I said, Uncle Rob, <laughs> he called me a, he called me a F stick. <laughs> and my uncle said, what the hell is a F stick? I said, I don't know, but that's what he called me. <laughs> and my uncle said, I tell you what, he's trying to get in your head, baby girl. You got to stop letting everything he say you absorb. You got to stop letting him get to you like that. So 
Um, as a result of that, he said, give it back. Okay, you have stick. How's your day going? Y'all, I'm here to tell you, an abuser hates being abused. Hear that? Write a note on that. An abuser hates being abused. Okay. My uncle says, everything he says, baby girl, repeat it. Thank him. Ask him, is there anything else? Because you got to go. You have, you are in, you got a job to do. You're in meetings, which was true. I'm at work in my office, crying, uh, office, all, all my coworkers and my supervisor outside my door trying to listen and see what's going on because I'm crying, snot coming all out my nose. And I did it. So he said, yeah, did you hear what I said? You ain't nothing but a F stick. Ain't nobody going to want you. You better hope we stay together. You ain't going to be able to afford that house. And you can't get this and you can't get that. And I said, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm still crying. But I said, yeah, you're right. I stood up. I got all erect in the chair because I was talking to my uncle. He had that way with me. He empowered me. He empowered me to be who I am today. Okay, I got to put that out there. So he's... um. He's uh, he's just going at me, just just tearing me down. I said, mm -hmm, okay, yes, okay, okay, yes, I'm a F stick. Um, yeah, I know, I know, I won't do anything without you. I know, I know, I got three kids. I, I know it's bad. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, okay, I hope you have a good day because I got to go in a meeting. Within two minutes. And, and you a F stick, <laughs> and I don't like you. <laughs> and he started crying. I was like, "Dang, this man is crazy." But you see how it was flipped. It was flipped. I put it back on him. The onus is on him. Okay, I'm fine. We react to everything because we were raised to react. Oh, I fell down. I hurt my knee. You hurt your knee. You didn't even get to cry yet. And your mama's over there. Oh, poor baby. Oh, let me get a band-aid. A, a little boy falls and he got to get up and man up. But we got to be all dramatic and all, they take advantage of that. Flip that script. When a man tells you, girl, you acting like a man. I don't, I don't like your attitude. Say, thank you. Thank you very much. What he's implying is you tough. I can't get through that toughness. No, he wants to break down your toughness. He don't know your story. But how dare he try to insult you? And when he can insult you, oh, you tough. I don't like you. You acting like a man. You got issues. Yeah, dude, I got issues because you're in my face. I want you to be gone because if anybody's trying to break you down for who you are, remember you God's child. You are that rose, that beautiful rose. I don't care what you've been through. You're beautiful. You are strong. You can do this. I'm here to tell you you can. You got to get all those negative thoughts out your head. Everything that was said negative about you, you got to remove it from your head. You're saying to me, no, it's not that sim simple. I've heard it all my life. Every time you hear a negative, you replace it with a positive. Oh, you stupid. I'm very smart. Oh, you ignorant. You are, you are ugly. No, I'm very beautiful. You got to start doing that. Yeah, you're going to look crazy because you might be in the store. You might see a beautiful woman and say, I bet you she didn't go through all that. Oh, she probably did, but God bless her. I need to focus on me. I'm good. I'm telling you, y'all, it'll work. Um, you've got to learn to love yourself. Thank you, Kate. Thank you very much, and thanks for joining us. Um, my husband and I, the William Hines, I live in Brooklyn. Hey, Delisa. Uh, judge, yeah, now they tell me I have all these walls up, but I'm not letting them down for a clown. No, baby girl. God knows, don't you dare. You're supposed to have your walls up. You are supposed to be guarded with a fool. 
as Judge said, with a clown. Why should you not have your guards up? You are supposed to protect yourself at all times. Now, if you got a good man, shh, whoa, release. Fly with the wings, honey girl. Fly, fly, soar. Be who you be. And God bless you. Get on the web, get on the web and share your share your glory because it's wor you're worthy to be shared and glorified if you got a man that adores you and loves you and respects you and honors you. But if they're putting their hands on you, degrading you, they're not the ones for you. So I hope I got through to everybody that needed to hear this story. And please don't let anybody destroy this, your body, and your soul. That's all we got. That's all we got. And you know what? That physical, them physical bruises, they, they, they do heal. Most times they heal. But your mind, your mind can play tricks on you. And I'm here to tell you, don't let anybody manipulate who you are. And remember to replace all those negatives with the positives. And if you have been in an abusive relationship, I ask you to do whatever it takes, whether it's through therapy, your pastor, your best friends that you know are your best friends. You could talk it out with them. But by all means, ask your friends, hey, if you see me going down that path again, can you can you tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, we need some help. We need to talk. You, 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 that guy is similar to the old guy. That's your Larry all over again. You may not see it, but that's why it's important to love ourselves because if you love yourselves, you will not let anybody else do that to you. Nobody can destroy you like that if you love yourself. Alrighty. This has been a touchy one, y'all. Thank you for your insight, sister. Thank you, Judge, for your insight. I really needed that tonight. And Vanessa, LOL, don't let it down for a clown. That's right. A clown? Do you know who you are, you beautiful sister? You beautiful rose. You awesome creation from God. You deserve the very, very best. And the loneliness is a curse. You don't have to be lonely. If you got your Bible and some good books and some wine, and okay, a little bit of lifetime. You ain't got no reason to be lonely. And a journal, and read back over your journal and see where you've come. Oh my gosh, Lord have mercy. I was something else. I was a, ooh, Lord. And when I look at my journal, I'm like, ooh, girl. But I grew. I grew. And that's what we're saying. If we are stagnant, we're not doing anything, we're not taking care of ourselves. We always are supposed to grow, grow, and don't let anybody harm you. Please, please don't let anybody harm you. I hope you enjoyed tonight. I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you all for coming on, and I'll see you next Thursday. Uh, please share if you feel it worthy of sharing. I will be on WBGR radio talking about relationships. Um, in spite of it all, in spite of it, I'm still a rose. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of things on the radio um, two, two times a week. and I'm sorry, two times a month. And then I'm going to up this too on FaceTime. I'm just trying to find a time, but uh, we're going to make it happen. And if you all have any ideas, any suggestions, please feel free to email me. Um, my site is being worked for my book signing. So it's maybe down right at the moment, but it's IamStillARose.com. 
And also I have one, Tanya, T-O-N-Y-A, Barbie, B-A-R-B-E-E dot com. You can always reach me at I am still a rose at gmail dot com. I get all kinds of emails back there and uh, some wanting to date. I'm not interested in dating. I have a friend, um, but we are it's complicated right now. And we've been we've been working on some things, but uh, um, don't do Facebook dating. But I enjoy the friendships that I have established on Facebook. Uh, Facebook. And uh, just thank you. Thank you for your support. You guys, you ladies, we have to, we have to look out for one another. Whatever you can do to help a sister, help a sister. And if you know somebody that's being abused, the hotline. I wanted to give you all the hotline. Please have this hotline somewhere close by in your phones so you can just share it with somebody or give it to somebody if you know that something is going on in their lives. Uh, that hotline number is 1-800-787-3224. And it's the hotline.org. Okay? All right. I love you in spite of it all. I am still a rose and so are you. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Good night.